In this section, we'll look at the Harlem Renaissance of the 1920s. During World War I, African Americans began a, a migration from the rural south to the urban north, where there were jobs in the World War I defense factories. And this is known as the Great Migration, and they flocked to cities like New York. And when they arrived in these northern cities, they often found that they were uh, harshly excluded, they're kicked out. And in places like New York City, that meant uh, high on Manhattan Island uh, above Central Park in the area of Harlem. And there they had to develop their own African American communities, their own doctors, their own merchants, and so forth. And one of the ironies of this is that in spite of, or because of rather, this harsh segregation, African Americans were able to develop a flourishing African American culture that's become known as the Harlem Renaissance. Renaissance means rebirth. And in the 1920s in New York, as part of the Harlem Renaissance, you see flourishing black music and art and literature. One of the new cultural forms was the music form of jazz, uh, which was strongly associated with African Americans in the New Orleans area. It linked a number of styles from African Americans and European musical heritage and kind of made heavy use of improvisation and polyrhythms and things like scat singing and swing notes. And dur during the Harlem Renaissance, jazz sort of grew into a distinct musical, musical form itself. It was uh, often popular in uh, Harlem nightclubs like the Cotton Club shown here on the left and uh, the Apollo shown on the right. There was, for example, Duke Ellington, a compo composer and pianist and band leader of a jazz orchestra, which he led him from, from 1923 until his death uh, in, a, in a career that really spanned 50 years. He was born in Washington, D.C., but based in Harlem, and uh, he, he was credited with more than a thousand compositions. Many people credit him with uh, sort of making jazz an art form on par with traditional music genres. After his death, he was actually awarded a special Pulitzer Prize for music. There's also Louis Armstrong, known as Satchmo of Pops. He was a famous trumpeteer, a singer and composer, whose career also spanned 50 years. He was said to have an, in, an inventive, quote-unquote, uh, very lively trumpet and cornet sound, uh, which uh, really proved a foundational influence in jazz. He's, he, uh, again, helped to uh, move the focus of jazz move music from sort of collective improvisation more to, more to solo performances. There's also Cab Calloway, a famous jazz band leader who was strongly associated with the Cotton Club, one of the most popular big bands whose uh, his band included a number of, of jazz greats such as Dizzy Gillespie, a young Dizzy Gillespie. He played from the 1920s and actually until his death all the way in the early 1990s. His probably most famous song was 1931's Minnie the Moocher. There was, there was Ferdinand Jelly Roll Morton, an early ragtime performer who became notable as jazz first great arranger. He, he kind of proved that the genre, which was rooted in improvisation, could uh, keep its essential spirit and character, even though when it was uh, sort of n notated. His famous composition, The Jelly Roll Blues, became a the first jazz composition in 1915. He, uh, Morton was no, no shy guy and he, he uh, claimed to have invented uh, jazz. Another musical genre of the uh, Harlem Renaissance was blues. Like jazz, blues originated in the Deep South and came north of the Great Migration of African Americans. Blues incorporated African American spiritual songs and work songs and simple rhyme narrative ballads. Uh, some say it, it employed call and response, uh, as did jazz, I guess, but uh, it made more of a specific chord progressions, of which the 12-bar uh, blues is probably the most common. It made heavy use of bass lines and in instrumentation, uh, instrumentation. Blues often related the troubles that African Americans faced. And in time, subgenres grew up, such as the Delta blues or the, say, Chicago blues. One of the more famous and early bluesmen was a guy named Robert Johnson. He he he, was, he died very young. He only had a brief life, but he was one of the first famous blues guitarists. Some people called him the, the king of the Delta blues. He was later covered by a lot of modern rock musicians, such as uh, Eric Clapton. 
there were a lot of female singers in uh, jazz and blues. One of the more famous was Bessie Smith, who was sometimes called the Empress of the Blues. She sh sang and danced and did comedic sketches and really uh, influenced a, a whole ge generation of singers. There was Billie Holiday, who was nicknamed Lady Day, and she was a, a famous singer and songwriter whose career spanned 30 years. She pioneered new waves of manipulating phrasing and tempo and influenced a number of future female singers such as Lena Horne and, and Ella Fitzgerald. I should note that gospel also continued as part of the Harlem Renaissance and one of the more famous uh, gospel singers was Thomas A. Dorsey. He was a composer and performer. He was unable to get his songs published but he kind of went from church to church and sang until they uh, caught on. In addition to music, there was a tremendous flourishing in, in black writing. World War I had begun a new realism in writers. At the end of World War I, writers began to focus more on uh, negative aspects of American culture. During World War I, a lot of writers had uh, been sort of restrained from writing anything negative about the U.S. because of patriotism. But after the war, uh, writers were writing things that uh, didn't always couch the United States in the best light. And obviously for African American writers, they're going to highlight some of the, the problems of Jim Crow. Uh, one of the uh, first to really write about uh, the situation of, of African Americans was James Weldon Johnson. And, and he published a set of poems in 1917 called 50 Years and Other Poems. It was, it was published on the anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation and it made it clear that African Americans were determined to remain uh, in America and push for equality. Uh, James Weldon Johnson followed that in 1922 with his The Book of American Negro Poetry, poems from uh, numerous black writers that, that Johnson uh, edited. He also wrote A History of the Harlem Renaissance, Black Manhattan, which was published in 1930, and he wrote uh, an autobiography of an ex-colored man, another uh, one of his more famous works. Another significant uh, writer of the Harlem Renaissance was Claude McKay. He came from Jamaica where he'd gotten his start uh, as a poet. And in 1922, he published uh, Harlem Shadows, which was a, a comp compilation of his poems. And it showed some of the defiance, uh, some of the poems he wrote. Uh, for example, If We Must Die and To the White Friends were some of the, the poems he wrote. It became uh, real famous. McKay later turned to uh, prose, and he, he wrote uh, things like Home to Harlem and novel like Banjo, and he, he later published his autobiography, A Long Way From Home. Another talented writer was Jean Toomer. He had studied in France where he developed a, a real you know, sense of introspection and, by the way, kind of like a, a left bank, heavy drinking, counterculture uh, type guy. He published uh, uh, the novel Cain in 1923, and it sort of contrasted lives of poor blacks in Georgia with the rich blacks in New York City, and it, it really ranked up uh, up there with Harlem Shadows as a famous work. Interesting, though, after uh, after her tumor uh, published Cain, he sort of just suddenly uh, retired from writing, right at his most famous. One of the more prolific Harlem Renaissance writers, and probably one of its most well-known, was Langston Hughes. He wrote novels, plays, and essays, and he was supported by his white, rich, liberal friends as, as long as he evoked the Afrin soul, but when he began to talk about poor blacks in New York City, he lost a lot of support. He lived an incredible life, lived all over the world, and uh, he, but he didn't always you know, moan or cry. Some of his writing was funny and moving, really talented writer. One of the most famous female black writers was Zora Neale Hurston. She was born to poor tenant farmers in Florida and used her experiences to write a number of short stories and novels. She was really one of the more intellectual writers. The Harlem Renaissance had advances in black theater and stage and painting. Probably one of the most famous painters of all of, all of American painters in the 20s was Henry Oswald Tanner and his works won medals in art shows in Paris and around the world. This uh, concludes the uh, section on the Harlem Renaissance.